Hello and welcome to today's webinar um, where we are very lucky to be joined by a very special guest who is Emma Mulqueeny OBE and um, she has a wealth of experience working with younger people who we're going to be speaking about today um, and she currently works as chief of staff at the large tech organization SUSE. So that's Emma and Nick Ellis, our very own digital transformation consultant, will be joining her um, to ask her a few questions about our main subject today, which is how Generation Z will change the business landscape. Um, so obviously these people who were born around 90, uh, between kind of like 96, um, I, Emma will kind of give more details of when they were born, they're kind of coming into the workplace now. Um, and so we want to kind of discuss who they are um, and what kind of difference they're going to be making to businesses moving forward. So Emma, welcome and thank you so much for joining us. No, it's lovely to be here. It's great. I'm looking forward to this. Great. Um, so I'll, I'll sort of hand over now to um, Emma and Nick to discuss. There's Nick. Here I am. Hello. Um, oh, hopefully I won't be on screen too much because that will be wrong. Uh, so I guess uh, I'm going to start with uh, a question. Actually, let's just start by clarifying that point. So Jen, I'm going to say Gen Z because I'm British. So OK, you know, yes, sorry. Gen Gen Z, yep. um, who is that and you know what sort of age range are we talking about Emma? So Gen Z is um, 95 to 2005, that, that's, that's the kind, that's the age range, so what they're, they're like um, 24, 25 now, so just 16 to 24, 25. OK, so um, we were just speaking briefly beforehand about um, uh, what the difference is and, and the fact that millennials, the term millennial gets used and people often mean Gen Z. And what, what what's the difference between those two, do you think? So millennials are obviously that kind of, you know, decade before them. Um, and I think the difference, so the difference in my experience, and also if you if you read the kind, you know, so, some of the research that's been done into these kind of two categories of people, um, is that millennials are um, much more aware of responsibility to the planet, to sustainability. You know, kind of, you know, um, their values have definitely kind of opened up from the um the kind of consumer boom that was in before that um and they kind of they paved the way i think for the gen zers um and then uh, um the the gen zers um the critical thing about the gen zers really that makes the biggest difference to them at the moment um firstly is that they grew up through recession and saw their parents um you know kind of losing their jobs there were no kind of uh solid career paths you know what what would seem to be a kind of you know a good uh job choice um for people that came before them for them is kind of you know actually that is is much more risky because they've seen it affect their family they've seen their parents having to take part-time jobs losing their jobs and kind of no real security so they're kind of driven by that fear as they come into the workplace but critically the second thing that kind of divides these two is that Millennials and everyone that came before them have had to adopt digital technology. So it's something that they have learned and incorporated in their lives as they've grown up. Whereas Gen Zers were born into a digital world. I think Nick, you were saying, you were saying the iPhone was kind of, you know, um, born two years before them. They, 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 they kind of have, have um, not had to adopt digital technology in a way they've had to adopt an analog lifestyle and, and having to adapt to that more so as they kind of come out into into the workplace so critically um, that's the difference and i think it drives a lot of behavior and um 2014 is a very long time ago now i was doing um 
some work with or I, I ran an organization called Young Rewired State, which was all self-taught programmers aged 18 and um, under. And um, and I could see a big difference with these kind of self-taught programmer kids, plus all of the other ones that were kind of around them that were um, coming along to our hack days, coming along to our events that might not necessarily be programmers, but were interested in this world. And I started to see a difference in the way that they were learning, in a way that they were kind of um, influencing the kind of information that they were, that they had access to and how that was affecting their attitudes and um, and I wrote a series of um, blog posts on what I called 97ers because they you know they're kind of at that point they were all kind of born around 1997 and um, and then I, I also did a, a TEDx talk on that but this was 2014 this was you know this was a while ago <laughs> you know they were just kind of emerging you know into or out of their into their teens and um, they were kind of like 14 to 18 at that point and it was really more around kind of like education and politics. And um, and then I was asked um, in my job in the last year to look at setting up an early career programme. And so I revisited that generation, that Gen Z generation, and could see that they were now emerging into the workplace. And that kind of reignited my interest all over again. OK, so picking that up uh, in terms of um, I would imagine that a number of our audience are, are business owners and, and managers so what do you um, what do you think all of that means um, for somebody trying to you know obviously run a business uh, and um, work with and motivate those people how is that different from back in the late stone age when I came into the workplace, um, you know, and then the early bronze age when some of our colleagues come in. Um, how, how does that feel different now, do you think? Well, I think so. I think the millennials path, path the way, right? Pa 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 paved the way. <laughs> they they um, so they kind of came into businesses and, and started a lot more of the kind of, you know, what is the purpose? What are the values and kind of really kind of upped the kind of CSR and really helped um, businesses realize the value of that so much so actually that publicly listed organizations really need to take this seriously in terms of what they're doing for the environment and sustainability and I think that millennials did that the um, Gen Zers so the ones that lots of organizations are trying to hire now they want young fresh talent they want to kind of bring them in you know train them and use them um, to kind of you know really ignite I think especially in the digital world kind of you know ignite the um, innovative juices of the organization um, and so they are you know they are being um, sought out and they are becoming quite difficult to hire because they're getting an awful lot of stuff kind of thrown at them which is why there's a lot of research into what it takes to kind of to, to attract them so first of all there are all of the, the values that the millennials have kind of like set out you know in in um for them you know that that the companies are uh you know do have values that their that their jobs have purpose and it's it's not just rocking up to work every day but when i mentioned before about this um the recession having such an impact on them you know they they are very ambitious and they really want a good career path and they want to be coached and they want to be mentored and they want to earn a decent amount of money to some extent millennials were not actually that fussed it was more about kind of let's save the world and and it's kind of okay because there's a you know there's a, a you know family cushion and you kind of know you're all right but from the gen z is they know that they can't trust that and they've got to be able to earn a decent crust themselves so for them it's actually you know they're actually more ambitious and more um keen to earn a decent salary and will leave if they can't see a way to quickly getting there right so so I think attracting them you have to have you know a business that gives them more than just a job where you have a clear purpose and where you're you know where where your values are kind of you know lived not just printed on your website um, but equally you know that you need to be able to offer and deliver 
a really clear career path for them that's quite fast moving. So, for example, with us in um, in Sousa, we're looking at kind of, you know, giving them meaningful salary bumps, you know, every quarter, you know, so it's not just like an annual salary review. It's it's kind of what can we do to really kind of keep them engaged, you know, reward, you know, the the behaviour that they're having to learn being a part of a big organisation and they are super keen to learn. But and we, you know, we are just at the beginning of this journey, right? So it's, you know, I can't speak from a whole host of experience, but what I can say from um, talking to a lot of other organisations when I was doing the research is that it is difficult to keep them. So, you know, you have to consider it a three year investment. And um, and if you think of it as a three year investment where you kind of bring them on, you kind of train them, get, you know, get them to the next part in their career, expect to lose them. But if you do the right thing by them, they will remain loyal to you. And if you think about it in terms of, you know, your customers, your, um, you know, the other organisations that you work with, especially in the in the digital field where it's so incestuous, that actually you will have a lot of advocates for your organisation if you do the right thing by them, even if you lose them at the end of, of three years. So really thinking about that investment once you've got a hold of them and Figuring out how to keep them is the challenge, I think. OK. Um, <laughs> and, and what's the answer? <laughs> That's the next question. Um, so what should we do about that? I, I, I guess and obviously, you know, we are you're in a technology company. Uh, we select our technology company. Both of us um, sit in that digital transformation world i suspect probably in 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 different ways but um so so i mean i've had conversations with uh, i will never forget i think i will take to my grave a, a workshop that i did where i had a, a 22 23 year old hr person this side and a 61 year old senior manager or business owner this side of the table and we got onto the subject of emojis and gifts you can imagine the difference in the response but one was basically, that's a complete waste of my time. I'm not interested. I don't pay my people to sit and send each other emojis and gifts. And the, the, the young HR person, to her great credit, going, well, you're not going to keep any people then, are you? Because that's how we communicate now. And you've got to, you know, and that's a kind of really obvious, tangible example. Um, where, where else? Um, and I guess I'll slightly steer the question a little bit because I, I, in terms of technology, do, do, what am I asking here? Do we think that technology and the uh, the kind of easy, almost automatic adoption of technology in what I call the very young, but which I, I realise the very young are now up to 26 years old, um, is that blurring the lines? You know, I I grew up, you and I grew up, and kind of like you know, you might have a laptop. And that was about it. it, it to what extent are we blurring the lines? Uh, Satya Nadella said the other day, um, do, do I work from home or do I live at work? Um, yeah, I, that wasn't a very structured question, but you get the idea of where I'm going, I think. I do. Yeah, I do. And I think, um, but, but, but I think that that's not necessarily a Gen Z thing. I think that is definitely a, um, a a generational thing right so so you are always going to get you know different ways of communicating different ways of behaving generation to generation but i think what you know where where you're talking about the way that they're communicating and maybe you know just resolving a little argument in the office is done by sending someone a little heart or maybe a gift that just makes them laugh when it's it's over rather than them having to go to hr and raising a complaint you know so there are, you know, there are different ways of resolving things. I don't think that's necessarily specific to Gen Z. I think that's just generational differences. But I think that what Gen Z do bring to an organisation and should be recognised for is that they do know how to communicate way, you know, in a complete, and it, they're born with this in a way that is completely alien to us. So they know how to use all of the digital tools in order to, to um, give the right message or ask the right question. For them, it's like, a, it's like a, a natural instinct 
what you would put on LinkedIn, what would you what you would put on Snapchat, how you would use Pinterest, you know, what you would use even with internal tools if you're using Slack. It's for them that that's like kind of, you know, television and radio. It's not either or. They just have a, an instinctive understanding of how to use all of those platforms and what's appropriate and what's not. And I think where sometimes organisations can go wrong, especially if you've got like, you know, comms departments, maybe we've got HR who are saying, you know, this is this is what you need to um, use these channels for. And when you've got, you know, young, fresh talent coming in at, at the presumably at the bottom of your organisation, learning, giving you insight and engaging with either your customers or, you know, the organisations that you're that you're working with, if you're not selling anything, um, they understand how to use those um, those platforms and those tools better than anybody else. And so you kind of need to find a way to work with them, to give them the autonomy to be able to kind of represent themselves and yourself online with some kind of scaffolding in terms of kind of, you know, what your values are and what the behaviours are of the company that's that's acceptable. And I think you know, you'll find that especially the older Gen Zers who have had to learn the hard way when you, um, you know, come up against, um, you know, kind of digital bullying, online trolls that, you know, they've, they've had to kind of read it. They've been at the kind of cutting edge of all of that more than any, anybody else. And they've, they've kind of found ways to deal with it and they know how to represent themselves online. What where they need help is understanding how to represent an organisation um, or a, or a community or, you know, ha, how they do that online. So I think the way that they use these tools, if I if I manage to get your question right, I think that the way they use, use these tools is instinctively better than any of the older people in the company. And we can learn from that. Um, yes, and we, we touched in, a, in the conversation before on um, synthesizing uh, and, you know, and combining information and sources of information. And uh, Jig was saying about, you know, you know, you know, young people. I find it, I've got kids in their twenties, you know, and they it's sort of where I would take half an hour or whatever to find something. They just seem to go, oh, there you go, Dad, it's done. You know, um, I, I, I guess. What was I say? I think there's a cultural shift needed from companies in terms of how to harness that skill and how to, as while you're training, but also being willing to learn from the people that you're training, which historically businesses I think probably haven't been great at. Um, I don't know if you have any views on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's managing the risk, right? And and, and you know, so I, I know a lot of. Um, organizations consider you know if we, if we so if we're talking about um, you know representation online and kind of you know so in social media you know are very wary and, and you know, try to kind of clamp down on that because they think they're managing the risk that that way so I think a, a new way of looking at how you manage the risk of young Gen Z is coming into your organization and how they're going to behave online in the same way that um, you know, becoming more aware of how important reviews are on Glassdoor, right? So it's it's kind of you know it's it's a refresh of of um, of the way that you manage risk within your company, of the way that your employees behave online when you're hiring um, Gen Zers. But with the um, with the being able to kind of quickly access information in in a way that is completely alien to or was completely alien to us before. Um, we before Google was invented <clears throat> in the olden days. Um, <laughs> to go to the library. Know, well, or going to a library, which is still a lovely thing. Um, I think you know, just just taking advantage of that. You know, so so where organisations have before spent you know lots and lots of money on market research and kind of trying to understand what you know what's happening out there, what's you know temperature testing what's happening either market you're selling into or one that you're buying from or something you're hoping to break into you know why not just you know use these if you've got any gen Zers in your organization why don't you know you know give them the challenge you, they you know they love to be challenged and for 
the skills that they have to be used to the benefit of the company and, and having a bit of a rethink about how you might use them for that is a is always a, a good idea, I think. We I like we have um, like a, a panel of them and we we swap them in and out. But, you know, we have a panel of them and we talk to them a lot and they sit in Slack and comment on everything. <laughs> yes, that's it. The constant thumbs, the thumbs <laughs> moving all the time. Um, yeah, so let's look forward then. I mean, obviously, digital. I'm a digital transformation person. You're a digital transformation person, so I, I suspect it's going to be uncontroversial. But the, I mean, my view is, well, I came into IT uh, years ago. Um, and it was essentially a hardware conversation um, and that's declined quite steeply over the last let's say five years should we say my view is actually in the next eight, whatever it might be um, hardware is going to become completely irrelevant it, it will become an information access conversation in all cases you know um, and I think it becomes I think it becomes an IP conversation in all cases. OK, I think I, I think that I think the thing that the, the next big thing that is going to come in and hit as hardware becomes less relevant is who owns what information, what information like data, for example, how mm -hmm. is that kept owned, sold? Where's the value in that? You know, and how much do people own? There is a whole host of stuff underneath that little carpet there is um and it's um it's something that uh, certainly i mean we, we principally work in, in the sme market i know caesar are in, in sme and and into much larger multinational markets as well certainly in the in the, in the smaller businesses i i fear it is underestimated um that the degree to which even if you have a physical product your ip is your business um it, it's something that i think is not fully understood uh and i'm still working on how to um convey that effectively in all, in all cases but we are drifting slightly from the gen z which is my fault i apologize um so I want to go and uh, hire a, a, a Gen Z. I find myself a, 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 a I was going to say find myself a 23 year old. That sounds crazy, <laughs> doesn't it? That's, that's not quite what I meant. But you know, find a find a young a young colleague uh, to to bring on board. Um, how you, you've talked in, in sort of general terms, but how how do you think? How do I need to pitch that differently now? Uh, and how do I need to change their onboarding experience and, and arriving in the company compared to what we have probably been doing for the last however many years? Um, so I think um, firstly start with the um, compensation package. Their their package that you know that when they come to a company and they're comparing all of, you know all of the companies that they are going to be looking at, they're going to be comparing it based on their package more than perhaps the generation before them. So, you know, it's kind of options. Do you want the security of, you know, a salary which is at a, a living wage and, you know, let's let's make sure that there's that this is an acceptable one and then these are the bolt-ons. It's kind of, so or do you want to have the possibility to be kind of mega rich in year one if you do supremely well in your job? In which case, what is the buffer? So I think that where before it's just been like you can you can hire these young things and they'll start working for you for 16 grand and they'll be happy for it. That's no longer the case. So I think looking at those options and instead of op offering like a, a single one going to them, you know, what is it that you're after? So being definitely being flexible and negotiable on the on the package to attract them in. Secondly, career path straight away, like right at the beginning, showing them where they can go what what are the career paths that are available in, in the organization who are the kind of buddies and mentors that they would have and where is that where has that worked before those two just those two things will make you stand above and beyond everywhere else if there are any kind of you know dodgy if there is some bad reviews on Glassdoor or if the company's kind of been in trouble for any of its kind of sustainable policies or anything like that addressing that front up and kind of making sure that that the 
um, the person who is coming to work for the company feels able to, um, I think would probably be be the third thing that I would say. And then go in being prepared to lose them within three years. Okay. Oh, I mean, I think three years, regardless of generation, I think these days three years is a is a good stint for a lot of people. Um, I look, uh, you know, my grandfather's generation who sort of came out of the army, joined a company, and then retired from it in 1989. You know, that has gone completely. Um, mm. So, so I, I agree with you there. So. Well, although, of, although, don't although. forget my story of Katerina when we were talking when we were talking before, there is there are Gen Zers out there who do want to stay working for the company and do see themselves as the company CEO at their first interview. They do come in with that kind of level of ambition, and there, there's more than one out there that do that. So there are ways of hanging on to them more so than the ones before, but be prepared to leave in three years. Okay. Carry on, sorry. <laughs> so um, I, we're coming up to the, uh, the 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 half hour point already. Um, I guess. Well, I'll, I'll I'll turn it around. Is there anything that we have not discussed that uh, you wanted to discuss? Um, I think I think something that I've said for a long time now is that. Um, this generation is really the change makers. They really are the ones that are going to this revolution that we all envisaged happening as soon as, you know, kind of digital became a part of everybody's lives. We imagined happening kind of en masse and it hasn't, you know, the kind of analog world and analog behaviors has has still managed to kind of keep its grip and we're just trying to digitize those old processes. But I think that we are in a, you know, we're a bridging generation, right? Once these Gen Zers, once these, these kids are the prime ministers, the technologists, the teachers, the policemen, the armies, you know, when, when they are the people that are making the decisions that are sitting in government and, and kind of, you know, deciding how the education system works, deciding how, you know, democracy works, when they're all up there. So what have we got? Another kind of 30 years. I think that is when the revolution will happen. That's when the kind of things really will change. So we we're, we're, we're bridging a gap and our role is not to solve all of that because it's, it's almost kind of beyond us really to be able to do that. But what we have to do is to try to kind of create as fallow a field as we possibly can so mm. that when they come in that change can happen. Yeah, I agree. And um, there was one bit in there that particularly sort of leapt out at me. I think a lot of digital transformation kind of conversations at the moment, certainly the ones I'm having are, as you sort of alluded to, how do we digitise and automate what we're doing now? Yes. And actually the next part is actually we could, there's all sorts of stuff, you know, with, and there's stuff that we haven't thought of yet. And um, uh, I, you know, I, I read a lot of science fiction as in real you know, hardcore science fiction because there's some really imaginative stuff in there about how we could sort of change the world and change things for the better. Um, and it does feel to me like we're on kind of a tipping point with you know, climate change and infrastructure and so on and so on. I could go on about that for another three hours, but I won't because we're sort of running out of time now. Um, so I'm going to hand it back to uh, Tess. But before I do that, I've really enjoyed this. Thank you very much. Um, and um, if anybody has any questions that haven't been raised um, and you know, you've got our email addresses, send me an email and, and um, we'll try and do stuff. But Tess, back to you. Hello, yeah, thank you so much everyone uh, for joining us today and a really, really big thank you to Emma. Um, thanks so much for giving up your time um, to talk to us. A really interesting conversation and I have to say for one, I'm even though as a millennial, I'm excited for um, the kind of revolution that Gen Zers are probably going to bring to the workplace. Um, I think it'll be a really exciting change. Um, the great news is this will this has been recorded, so you'll be able to watch it again. Um, so we'll be sharing that link with you um, after the show. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, Emma. Thanks, Nick, for your time. <laughs>